I said in the last video that in every western country, marriage rates are at an all-time low. This shows the general trend that less people are taking dating and settling down as seriously as they had been in previous generations. It's a matter of fact, if you're watching this video over 21 years old, if this was 60 years ago, there's a good chance you'd already be married by now and with a kid already on the way. Wow, have times changed. I also said in the last video that one of the main reasons for this is because of women's refusal to settle for guys who are on their level. In other words, women are walking away from dating in mass. However, what this video will be about is the extremely important male side of the matter. Everyone knows it takes two to tango. And it doesn't take a genius to figure out, as a man trying to date today, things are a lot harder. Dating is more competitive and worse in pretty much every way compared to how it was 50 years ago. So, with good reason, a lot of men have packed their bags and decided the juice simply isn't worth the squeeze. So, in this video, I'm going to be highlighting all of these reasons for how dating today may not be worth it anymore. Reason 1. Guys, look at the reward for dating and just don't deem it to be very worth it. For these first two points, I think the work-reward balance is just not that good for dating anymore. We'll take a look at both, but starting with the rewards. I believe the average deal for marriage today is a lot worse. 60 years ago, you'd get married at 20 years old, buy an affordable house and have a large family to look forward to. Only one of you would work, which unfortunately would be you as the man. However, this meant that most child-rearing responsibilities were placed in the hands of your spouse. Your kids would move out in their late teens, which means you would be child-free come your 50s. So you would have a 20 to 30 year free period to look forward to with the person you love most. So that's all the reward before. However, nowadays, all of this is considerably worse. Instead of a 20-year-old in-shape church girl, you're likely to get a 30-year-old woman who's had a party phase and whose body fat is 15% higher. Of course, this is a generalization here, but when you look at the averages for age of first marriage and body fat percentage, then you can understand the truth behind the point. And you get this to spend the next 30 years of your life working to pay off a smaller but more extortionate house. Furthermore, you'll need to take care of some child-rearing responsibilities because both you and your wife will be working. Your kids probably won't move out until their late 20s because they'll be screwed with an even worse deal than you. So you'll be lucky to be child-free and have retirement to look forward to come 60. So when you piece all of this together, I think this shows it's obvious the reward for marriage is worse, considerably so compared to 60 years ago. But that's still only one side of the coin, because for the second point, the amount of work that needs to go in to get the lacklustre reward is just ridiculous. I think it's undeniable more and tougher work needs to go in today for finding a partner than it ever was before. 60 years ago, there was intense pressure for women to get married as young as possible. And this is confirmed in the graph I already showed for the average age of marriage. So you were more or less handed a wife. Whereas today, you'll likely need to go through the trenches of online dating, and for any man who's experienced this, who's not in the top 10%, knows how hard dating online can be. I won't repeat too much of what I've already said in previous videos, but put simply, a significant number of women on dating apps put themselves, their kid, and even their dog above finding love. For men 30 and above, you'll know this to be true all too well. And as for guys from 18 to 30... The Chad Monopoly is in full swing. For the lucky men in the top 10%, these are the guys that are hoarding all the women in their late teens and early 20s. 
These are the guys that are facilitating young women's party phases. So if you're an 18 to 30 guy, it's either be good looking and have success, or be in the bottom 90% and be competing for leftovers. And at best, you'll later get a woman after her party phase is done and delude yourself into thinking you've gotten the last laugh instead of the chats. Now, this is just online dating, but if you are thinking you'll be able to avoid these trenches because you'll just focus on real life, then think again, because real life has also gotten worse. Not only does the monopoly of online dating suck away potential suitors from real life, but even if you want to focus on real life, wokest culture has made it harder than ever to meet a woman the old-fashioned way. In today's day and age, you can get accused of harassment for merely showing romantic intent in a girl. Don't believe me? Check out my video on how I was accused for approaching women in public. And this wasn't even for romantic intentions. This would have never happened 60 years ago. But today, if a woman feels you have sexualized her inappropriately, then by all means, you have done that. You might have just gazed at her briefly or literally walked next to her while she was working out. If she feels sexualized, then her word means everything and your innocence means nothing. The final nail in the coffin for those banking on so-called warm approach. Because even this has gotten worse. There has been a decline of social capital in recent decades. Church engagement is decreasing. Local pubs and nightclubs where you'll see familiar faces are slowly but surely dying. People don't even go to shops as much anymore because you can buy everything online from Amazon. And some communities build fences around to lock themselves in. You can't argue people don't interact with one another in their communities as much anymore. Again, if you don't believe me, I dare you to go to a densely populated city near where you live and board one of the trains there. You'd think because there's so many people crowded that these spaces would be oozing with life. But instead, watch as everyone is like a zombie with a miserable look on their face. Airpods in, faces glued to screens. It's considered strange to even make eye contact with someone. So ironically, the sense of community is 1000 times worse the bigger the community is compared to smaller ones. So, this is just the first two points, but as all of this doom and gloom is happening within dating, what's happening outside is the polar opposite. Point three, outside of dating, there are now many more opportunities for happiness than ever before. Think about this for a second. What is dating's main competitor? You might think it's a bit of an obscure question, but actually think about it for a sec. I would say the main competitor for dating is dopamine and relaxation activities. The more time and availability people have for these things, the less of a concern dating becomes for them. Think about it this way. 60 years ago, if you didn't have a TV in your house, let alone Wi-Fi, smartphones, iPads, Xboxes, online content, Dating would likely take a much bigger level of bandwidth in your mind than it does today. After all, it was either try meet people in the real world, or sit at home twiddling your thumbs. But today, we now have all of these cheap sources of dopamine millimetres away from the second we wake up to the second we go to bed. My point is, all these sources of dopamine serve as distractions from what our biology has actually evolved for us to do. And I'd argue many men are unconsciously making a choice to avoid dating by having their time sapped away via these sources of dopamine. If you play video games for 10 years straight, you haven't necessarily chosen not to date. In fact, it probably didn't even cross your mind but it is the unspoken opportunity cost that has taken you out of the dating market. Now, the number of men pursuing this way of life is undoubtedly increasing. 
Ask yourself, how many guys do you know who live as basement dwellers playing Valorant and Skyrim for 12 hours a day? Loads. And that's why this point probably makes me the most sad out of all the five listed in this video. Because I think it's a very unhealthy way to quit dating as a man, unknowingly allowing yourself to rot. I mean, I think there's a difference between voluntarily quitting dating because you've listened to the other points in this video and made the conclusion dating isn't worth the squeeze. Versus being blissfully unaware, letting time slip through your fingers, and you've spent so much of it rotting, that by the time you think you should start making an effort, it's probably too late. All that's binging dopamine for nothing. So all I'll say is that if you are genuinely thinking about quitting dating as a man, then make sure it is an active decision which you've evaluated thoroughly. Because there are opportunities nowadays to pursue higher pleasures, such as a business, passion, or hobby which you're very serious about. And you're more than welcome to pursue these if you think you'll gain more happiness from this over the course of your life than pursuing a partner and kids. Anyway, that's point three, and now moving on to reason four. There are basically zero societal expectations for you to get married and start a family now. 60 years ago, even if you wanted to do what I mentioned in the last point, spend your life at home rotting and binging dopamine. You didn't really have the option to do so because it would eventually get to the point where your parents would be sick to death of your existence. They'd kick you out the house and leave you to fend for yourself. Back then, as soon as you became an adult, it was a matter of find a partner, then get married, then start a family, then work for 40 years, or rot in the streets. In some circumstances, your parents would try to set you up with a daughter from another family if it meant moving you along in life. However, today, there simply isn't this pressure let alone force to try hurry you into getting to the next stepping stones of life. Today, if you want to live at home rotting, playing video games for 12 hours a day, a lot of parents will give you that freedom until you're 30, something that would have been utterly laughable just two generations ago. Additionally, another point that got the ball rolling for couples back then was what's known as shotgun marriages where if you got a woman pregnant, you'd more or less be forced to marry her. The idea being that if you didn't marry her, then her father would come round your house with a shotgun and use it to persuade you. There was no birth control back then, and abortions were heavily frowned upon, if not illegal in some nations. So if you got a woman pregnant, you had little room to worm your way out of it. However, today... You are free to run around dating casually, or stay at home rotting. In fact, you basically have the freedom to do anything throughout your teens and twenties, with little to no urgency to rush into a relationship or marriage. Society just doesn't care about these things anymore. And in fact, in some cases, kids are seen as a nuisance or hindrance to yours or other people's lifestyles. No wonder the birth rate in basically every western nation is collapsing. Anyway, finally moving on to the final reason why men are walking away from dating. Reason 5. There are way higher stakes to getting married and starting a family nowadays. Here are the facts. The average net worth of most families has increased twofold in the last 30 years. Would you want to risk losing half of it in a divorce? Not including the lawyer fees, potential alimony payments, and child support. Furthermore, in parallel to this, the probability that you'll end up losing half your net worth is higher than ever before. As I'm sure a lot of you already know, the probability of divorce is close to 50%. A literal coin flip. Would you want to flip a coin to risk losing half your net worth? This is why a lot of people view marriage as a negative free roll. At best, it will lead to neutral outcomes, and at worst, it will lead to negative outcomes. Now, me saying all this, 
it might not be relevant to you. Because you might be religious and believe it's your duty to get married because God told you to. But first, nowhere near as many people are religious anymore. And second, in this video I'm highlighting why less men are pursuing dating and marriage. So don't shoot the messenger here. And you can't deny it, a big reason less men are pursuing this is because they are thinking rationally of the pros and cons of getting married. What I'm saying is, if you want to get married because you're religious, then you're more than welcome to. But I'm speaking for the majority of young men who aren't and thus should view marriage as a purely logical decision. So, if you are non-religious, then marriage is literally a contract. I'll say that again. If you are non-religious, then marriage is literally a contract. Not many people nowadays view marriage as this mystical, magical thing where you're making God proud and raising a family all in his name. If you sign your name on that dotted line, you're basically agreeing to a 50% chance of losing 50% of your net worth. And let's not forget the 20k party that lasts one day you'll end up paying for. But just focusing on this part, this is why I recommend to any man looking to get married, it's always a good idea to sign a prenup to ensure your wealth gets divided fairly, in the not so unlikely chance you split up. Anyway, that's the final point of the video and wraps up why men are choosing not to date or pursue marriage anymore. If you enjoyed this video, I'd recommend checking out my other videos discussing the macro dynamics of the dating market. Links will be in the description. And also, to help out the channel, I'd recommend pressing the like button on your way out and leave any thoughts you have in the comments below, as it all helps the YouTube algorithm. I'll see you in the next one.